Arkansas with its first ever national championship. The Hogs are bringing home the trophy. Look at the train in the background, all these symbols of science as the way into the future. I confer upon each of you the degree indicated on your diploma. Congratulations, graduates. There she stands, lording over the slab from her door, the names of her children who have gone on before, the children of college who have grown into age, but whose names shall remain on this stone page. Down life's hardened walk, they're walking today for the next generation they're paving a way. The Razorback, 1929. If this walk could talk, the stories it would tell. Within every inscription, are memories recalled by graduates who earn this historic recognition, their names honored forever. Each story is unique and poignant, timeless and infinite, just like the walk itself, as it has been and shall always be. We believe that paradise lies just beyond the gate. A thousand memories will come. As you come up from the south, over the Frisco, and a whirl along the Ozarks, you come at last to a region prettier than you had thought our state could boast. Suddenly, the train turns out of a narrow alley, and instead of mountains, you see a broad plain where all is life, and far off in the distance, set like a crown upon a rounded hilltop, the University of Arkansas. The Morrill Land Grant Act, 1862. Teach such students branches of learning as are related to agriculture and the mechanic arts in order to promote the liberal and practical education of the industrial classes in these several pursuits and professions in life. On opening day, January 22, 1872, the university welcomed eight students. The sole co-ed in the group complained because she was the only girl. But her mother sent her back, telling her there would soon be more girls. And there were. Enrollment increased rapidly. None of the first students were high school graduates. There were no public schools in Arkansas. Public education in Arkansas went no further than the elementary grades, and seldom that far. A great university is love wisdom, strength, to one girl or woman, to one boy or man, or to thousands alike down through the years. After receiving my degree as a member of the university's first graduating class, I stuffed my diploma in the saddlebags, hopped on my mule, and rode off to my first teaching assignment. Mary Antoinette Nettie Barnett, class of 1876. The university graduate students prepared for practical work in scientific agriculture, in engineering, electrical, civil, and mechanical, or make some practical chemists, geologists, botanists, or etymologists. 
The laboratories are equipped with modern apparatus for work in seven different sciences and are among the best in the South. There are full courses in seven different languages besides English, in mathematics, logic, and astronomy, in the various natural and mental sciences, in history, in pedagogics, economics, and sociology, in music, and in art. My name is Hayden McElroy. I graduated from the University of Arkansas in 1961. This is, these are my two daughters. I'm Melissa McElroy Hawkins, and I graduated from the university in 1983. I'm Melinda McElroy, and I got my BSBA in 1986 and my JD in 1995. The university has always been in the McElroy's DNA. Uh, we've always been associated with the university. We've hopefully been contributors. And if McElroy family hadn't donated the McElroy farm, we may not have had that opportunity here. That's, that's true. Then your grandfather, your great grandfather's uh, farmhouse, or around his farmhouse, became the first classroom before they built Old Main, and Old Main was the first building that was built on campus. Everyone connects the family with the university. Well, and just the state being as small and rural as it is. Um, I, I, and I live in Little Rock, so I, I have a, an appreciation of the University of Arkansas as being a gift to the state, not just to Northwest Arkansas or to Fayetteville. The uh, university decided uh, to get rid of the residences and were kind enough to keep our old home here. In fact, it's on the National Register. I want each student to rub his feet on my name and make two wishes. Make one for your happiness and make one for mine. G.C. Abernathy, Class of 1900. The names of graduates are inscribed in concrete in the famed Senior Walk. The very earliest were born before the Civil War. The class of 1905 wanted to find a way to remember their time here at the university, so they had their name put into the stone uh, to be there forever. The class of 1904 found out, they got jealous, so they had their names put into the stone, and it has been a tradition ever since. The senior walk. To the freshman, it is a white strip in the distance. To the sophomore, it is a novelty. To the junior, it is a goal. To the senior, it is the highway to success. Dorothy Ann Brewer, class of 1937. The male seniors mixed and laid the concrete. The one who could print well put in the names. After the block was completed, the seniors assembled on each side of the walk. The president of the class dedicated it and the group pledged allegiance to the university. The ceremony was discontinued after two or three years because the students thought it was too sentimental. Joe Bell Holcomb, professor of English. I love that Joe Bell was witness to that and historically documented it, but then she said, yeah, but they stopped doing that ceremony thing, but they kept making the walk. The walk didn't go away. The pledging, eternal faith to the university and maybe shedding a tear or two, they didn't do, but they kept making the walk. And that's, that's why it's still here. And that's why my name is still on it. And my daughter's names are on it. And my husband's name is on it. That's kind of magical. When I moved from India back in 2017 here, uh, it was spring. The first thing I noticed was the grad walk. At first I saw a few names and I thought that it was the names, it were the names of the founding members of the university or the first class, but the names just wouldn't stop. They wouldn't end, just went on and on and on. And then I realized every single student is engraved uh, on the grad walk. And I was glad that I'm here because, uh, you know, long 
far ahead in the future when I'm gone and nobody even remembers me and nobody even has any proof that I exist, but she will remember me for always, permanently. Uh, 500 years from now, if there is somebody who comes here and sees my name, they're gonna know that this person was here. From here down to the street are our first 50 years of graduating classes. And you can see here in 1876, our first graduating class, like I said, had only nine students, both men and women. Currently, we have over 4,000 students that have their names put into the sidewalk every year. It runs over six miles on campus, and we have it mapped out until the class of 2035. We're heading toward my grandmother's name on a senior walk. She started into the university the very first year that they held classes. Let's see. Right here. There she is, okay. Yeah. Lenora Blakely. First one. Yeah. yeah. The first graduate in our family was Lenora Blakely, and the most recent graduate in our family I hope not the last one, but the most recent one was my granddaughter, Grace Ann Blair Sugg, who graduated in 2021. I am Edwin Sugg, class of 1985. Mary Sugg Bassett, class of 1979 and 2016. Ann Wiggins Sugg, class of 1952. Mark Sugg, class of 1998. Lucian Eck, class of 2017. And so uh, they're still, still doing senior walk, thank goodness. I have two great granddaughters that we're, we're trying to indoctrinate and bring them on visits to senior walk to get them to be the sixth generation. Guy, the oldest son of my grandmother, Lenora Blakely, should be on here in 1904. When it was still Arkansas Industrial University, four stagecoaches a day and an enrollment of eight characterized a budding personality. For the students in the early days, life was simple and discipline strict. Most of the out-of-town students lived in private homes in Fayetteville, paid $12 to $15 a month for board and room, and were treated almost as family members. Everyone walked to and from school. Professor Robert A. Leffler the first 100 years. I am Charles Leffler. I graduated from the University of Arkansas in 1984. I'm a professor emeritus of the Walton College, and my father was Dean Robert A. Leffler of the Law School. He was asked to write the centennial history of the University of Arkansas, the first 100 years, uh, simply because he had been around since 1918 and personally knew more of the University of Arkansas history than did anyone else. In 1921, Dad would have been beginning his senior year at the university. He wrote a story about the 50th anniversary celebrations, which included uh, the ROTC, Reserve Officers Training Corps students, having a mock World War I type battle back and forth across the university campus. My father, uh, who was in charge of one of the sides of the battle, uh, ended up being rather disgusted because most of the students got bored and left about halfway through and went back to their dorm rooms or perhaps went off to party. Well, he started teaching in 1927, uh, took some time off for service in World War II, uh, but then he uh, ended up teaching until he was 89 years old. Now, at the time, the university had a mandatory retirement age, so when he hit that, uh, he had to leave, and he taught at Oklahoma and Vanderbilt for a couple of years, but then circumstances allowed him to come back to the University of Arkansas, which he really wanted to do. So he ended up teaching after retirement for 19 more years at the salary of $1 per year. He would donate his time to the university because he loved teaching and he loved the students. He 
He started every class by pounding on the desk three times, and as was the tradition then, when he called on a student, the student was supposed to stand up to answer the question and could not sit down until uh, the professor gave permission. Uh, it gives me something to smile about whenever I drive by and look at it. I'm proud of him. We are seniors now and think of ourselves versed in the wisdom of all things. As the time draws near to our obtaining that much coveted sheepskin, we begin to lose confidence in ourselves and to wonder if the battles of life are what they're cracked up to be. We are so uncertain of the future that we almost wish for one more year's respite. Catherine Vox, Class of 1897. The student life of a university is the most interesting feature in it. Indeed, that embraces everything. It is reasonable to suppose that in a body of as many as 600 students, there are some of all kinds. We have them here. Corley G. Price, Class of 1898. The health of the students is excellent. Every precaution is taken to guard against disease. This year, it's expected that the total enrollment will be something over 900. The average expenses of a student are not more than $250 with board at Buchanan Hall or $300 in town. And at this rate, a student can live well. The social influences on students are the best that could be desired. The town is strictly prohibition, so no danger can come from that source. The faculty does not object to a student's having all the fun she wants, provided she gets her lessons and acts like a lady. Indeed, some of the faculty, if you'll excuse our speaking of it, seem to enjoy a good time themselves every once in a while. But after all, it takes something more than a faculty and a few lecture rooms to make a university. Coach Hugo Bezdek is credited with changing the name of the Cardinals to the Razorbacks. During the 1909 season, Arkansas was undefeated for the first time in football history. The favorite story of the fans is that Bezdek commented, after a great game, that his players had fought like a herd of Razorbacks. Another story was told by Phil Huntley, who played for Bezdek. The team was on a trip into Texas when somebody yelled, here come the Razorbacks. It was entirely logical that calling the hogs would become part of the tradition too. Pig suey. Pig suey. Pig suey. And that is how you call the hog. By the time I came to the university in 1921, Bezdek had departed. Razorbacks had become firmly established as the team's name. I made some snide remarks about the quality of the drawings I had seen of the Razorback hog. Some upperclassmen heard my remarks and decided I would draw a better one before they'd permit me to go to bed that night. My art teacher, Miss Elizabeth Galbraith, taught a special class based on the theory of dynamic symmetry. It was built on squares and rectangles with horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines. I used this method to change my standing razorback to a running razorback. 
I did many drawings, trying to make the Razorback run as I thought he should. The first to be published to show the university symbol in full speed ahead action. Tall tales are still told about him, and his sterling qualities of courage and independence are much praised. As for the Razorback of the university, the traditions that have grown up around it provide us all a lesson in sentiment and pride. Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go! Hawks. Go. Go. Doy Hank Hancock, Choctaw Nation tribal member, class of 1926. You're a part of a very elite group as a Razorback alum. You could be walking in a grocery store in, I don't know, South Carolina, let's say. You could be wearing a hog shirt and somebody could shout out Woo Pig. Y'all are going to be the only people there that knows what that means. Because wherever you go in the world, you can find a connection to an Arkansas Razorback. The, some of the, the funniest conversations I've had are People who say, I was, you know, in Malaysia and uh, I was there on a corporate business trip and uh, was invited to someone's home and in their backyard was a Razorback. What is a university? a place where all ranks and conditions of society may come to partake of knowledge in the discovery, a place for the gathering of individuals aflame with a desire to extend the boundaries of natural science or to search deep into the humanities, a place where the technique of the professions may be learned and high character developed, a place where prevails freedom of thought and the right to speak the truth. These are the ideals of the University of Arkansas. John C. Futrell, President, 1913 to 1939. In these days of self-determination and self-government, student sentiment is the most effective force for righteousness on our campus. Student honor comes by way of an educated student body. Scholastic ideals of any university are determined mainly by the attitude of the student body. Administrators may guide and direct, but they cannot coerce. Martha Reed, Dean of Women. A blue haze hanging over the valley, Arkansas, and the Ozarks. A flicker of sunshine, a wisp of a cloud. The blare of a trumpet, the whine of a saxophone. A crowd of students hurrying by. Memories of freshman days, proms, hours of cramming, hurried exams, brief vacations, and another incoming generation. It's in the air. It's, uh, there's nothing like the University of Arkansas and Fayetteville in the fall because it's just so beautiful. And you, uh, I think it's coming back here every year while you're a student and it's you know in a few weeks it's going to be pink and orange and yellow and there's a football game and you're going to go on a hike in this beautiful part of the state in this beautiful part of the world i got many different job offers and visited lots of campuses and when i came up i-49 and i saw the university of arkansas i knew that this was this was the place to be just it was just so beautiful i knew when i got into town that this is where i needed to be we are so excited to have you here in person for midday every woman student should have a well-rounded experience consisting of good academic standing active participation in a significant extracurricular activity, and an opportunity for enjoying social life on campus. Jeanette Scudder, Dean of Women. The 
yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. It was a hushed and thoughtful group that gathered around the radio in the Union Lounge on December 9th to hear President Roosevelt make a formal declaration of war. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. Many students had brothers in Pearl Harbor, cousins at Hickam Field, friends in Manila. The first excitement was soon to die down, but there remained constant reminders that we were fighting a war. Around 100 men left school to join the armed forces. Second semester, enrollment dropped twice the usual amount, leaving a total of 1,760 persons on the University of Arkansas campus. New defense courses appeared on the curriculum. Classes and explosives also proved popular. Instructors competed with the clicking of knitting needles as industrious girls turned out sweater after sweater for the cause. The university now has the twofold function of preparing people for leadership in the war in which we are now engaged and convincing them of the importance of being prepared for leadership in a post-war world as well. Jeanette Scudder, Dean of Women. The tasks we were called upon to perform have been difficult. Long hours, day after day, to coordinate our military and civilian educational programs. And our faculty, greatly depleted by the departure by many members for the armed forces, shouldered heavy teaching burdens. The university remains at the service of our nation, ready to assume any task that will continue to winning of the war or aid returning service men and women. Dr. Arthur M. Harding, President, 1944. Our time is one in which conditions are far from normal. The thrill and the interest in living are greater than ever before. Out of the turmoil and the disillusionment of the Great War will rise a new conviction of the values of peace. We can only imagine what the future holds for the University of Arkansas. The university for me is home. It's a place where I came, arrived here from Texas in 1999, but I never imagined that two decades would pass and I would be here and I'd build a career here. And it's become, you know, home. It's become a place for where I've had, you know, numerous experiences with students, faculty and staff and opportunities to grow and learn and develop. Silas Hunt decided to make the great try. He gladly accepted the responsibility in his desire to blaze a trail in Arkansas education for his race. Robert Leffler, Dean of Law. Beginning in 1948, February of 1948, when uh, Silas came, uh, all of his classes that semester were, he was taught separately, had, had separate professors for his particular classes. They looked long and hard to find the right person uh, to whom perhaps there would be less objections. And in Silas Hunt, who was a uh, World War II veteran, he was wounded, uh, he was in an engineering battalion and wounded uh, during the uh, Battle of the Bulge. Uh, of course, happened during the winter of 1944, and he uh, was severely wounded and lay two days out in the snow before he was found. Uh, and Dad was of the opinion that perhaps his war wounds contributed to his uh, early death from tuberculosis. He was required to eat his lunch down in the boiler room and would have been alone had it not been for Jeanette Scudder, then Dean of Women, who would take her lunch and go down in the boiler room and have the company of Silas Hunt, and then he would have her company as well. And then in September of 48, Jackie Shropshire came, 
and Jackie had all of his classes by himself. Uh, but they call themselves having an experiment moving him into one or two classes. And the first class they moved him into, uh, they put him behind the proverbial rails. Shropshire was placed in the front corner of one of the rooms with a small wooden railing around him. After one day, the railing was taken down, the dean giving public relations as the reason. Robert A. Leffler, professor of law. The truth, which until now has not been publicly revealed, was that Dad was horrified about the existence of the railing, which he had not known about beforehand. So that night, he came back to school and let himself in uh, and brought a handsaw and cut down the railing, and uh, he hid it in the dean's bathroom for the rest of the week, which he could keep locked, and then came back down the weekend uh, where he could smuggle it out and brought it home and burned it in our family fireplace. And today we'll be starting our tour at Silas Hunt Hall. So, a few things about Mr. Silas Hunt. He was the first African-American student led into the, um, to the law school back in 1948. So I feel like this is a very fitting starting point to see where we all started. What you're seeing today began in a class that I taught this past fall. And in that class, we had an opportunity to explore the experiences of an RSO uh, in the, that was born in, in 1968 called Black Americans for Democracy. And it was an RSO comprised of African-American students exclusively, and their desire was to try to really make desegregation a real thing on this campus, something meaningful to them. In the 70s or in the 60s or whenever, when integration was happening, it was really hard for Black students to find community, I guess. Each station represents some particular episode or some issue that bad referenced in that bad times. And so the students did this tour of kind of civil rights and desegregation based on the interests and the issues that, that bad referenced in their newspaper. It's important to uplift black voices in our community and just to make sure that they feel heard and seen. And I, well, when we get up here, I'm going to get you to stop and tell us a little bit about what the, what the building was like when you were in law school. It's really very emotional to come and see the law school. Our chairs were apart from the white students. Uh, and that was the kind of thing that existed. Things were moving now, let's face it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that all was that negative by any means. We had some positive things happening by virtue of our being able to, to get to know some of, the, some of the fellows in particular. This was a Southern law school without the encouragement of court order deciding to move in this direction. Uh, now, clearly there were challenges there. I mean, Silas Hunt, and his being taught in the basement and those kinds of things. But eventually, you know, you're working through all of that. And at least, I mean, he's in the law school and he's enduring this. And then you've got others who join him. And over time, you know, you're making straight the way. It was a, something that I saw as a way of putting myself in, in a position to at least have a hand, a role in attacking and, and fighting discrimination and segregation. I feel good about my having been here and the pioneers. Each of us, of course, has <clears throat> been able to do, to be of benefit, if you want to say it in that fashion. All of it wasn't easy by any means, but we were there, and we were there with things to do, uh, to make things better. The expression, what is the use in living unless it's, unless it's to make the world better for those who come after you? We 
I'm very appreciative because as I, as I stand on my, my parents' shoulders, I also stand on the shoulders of those pioneers, those trailblazers. I could only imagine what it was like when Silas Hunt came up here. Uh, not just campus, but the community in which you reside. I'm Ron Rainey. I'm a professor in agricultural economics and ag business. Um, so I'm a three-time graduate uh, from Little Rock, Arkansas. I also said that membership has its privileges too. I mean, you can come up to the alumni house, you get special involvement. Currently, in addition to being a professor, I am uh, the president of the National Alumni Board. A thousand dollar humanitarian award to Dr. George Washington Carver, renowned Negro scientist. I am not sure but I am worthy of this splendid citation. But I was sitting in a class one day, and uh, I think it was Dr. Longer, and he was talking, uh, he was talking about one of the greatest scientists of the 20th century, and he's talking about George Washington Carver. And, and it just made me just, just a sense of pride there that, wow, there's a recognition, even though I'm at a predominantly white university, there's a recognition of that excellence. And it made me want to want to be a part of that excellence. You always hear it, so your name is etched on Senior Walk, and, and as you're walking the classes, you see the names, and uh, that was something that was, uh, it was just there, but I didn't really visualize it until I became a graduate. Uh, university has a tradition, U of A Senior Walk, so all of the sidewalks, you'll see every senior that graduates, they have their name in Senior Walk. My ultimate goal was to become a college graduate. And, uh, but once I achieve that, to know that my name is etched out here, uh, it, it, it just gives you a sense of pride. It, it gives you some stories to tell uh, my nephews and nieces, uh, to my daughter. Part of the U of A legacy, the senior walk. I got a degree from, from the flagship university, but then um, carrying that forward and passing that, passing that baton on to others. So that's the tradition at the U of A? Old Main is the center of campus. So you think you want to head up here one day? M maybe. I'm maybe. thinking about it. Okay. You know, people say go to college, be success. And, and I think that success is a journey and not a destination. Oh, victory. The U of A represents progress. Uh, I have been amazed by the ways in which this university continues to um, foster um, progressive movements and diversity, equity, inclusion, um, the way that it supports faculty to, uh, to do new and innovative things in terms of research and service, um, the ways that I've been supported uh, with some of my craziest and most outlandish ideas uh, as long as they're in the name of progress. Legend has it, if a fellow persuades a girl to sit on the stone with him, he's entitled to a kiss. The same deal applies to girls. Over here on the left, uh, we have Spoofer's Stone. Uh, it's a really sweet story behind it. Um, during construction of the building, one of the carts broke and a, a piece of limestone landed there um, and um, it has stayed there ever since. Um, it has been a meeting spot for sweethearts on campus and often a lot of students will get um, engaged here at Spoofer Stone, so it's just really sweet. Yeah, it is the right course class. It took several days and numerous trips to the bookstore to acquire even the minimum amount of lab manuals, texts, theme papers, economic outline maps, and other ridiculous paraphernalia that professors believe to be so absolutely necessary for their courses. It seemed only natural to live from Saturday to Saturday, and no one could quite understand the professors who were worried about a recession and risks and the things professors always worry about. There were all kinds of parties. A few cynics said some were better than others, but who ever heard of a bad party? I don't consider blindness a, a, a disability. I consider it a, 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 an inconvenience, but uh, I, I just went ahead with doing what I did. I joined a fraternity and I 
uh, got into student politics, and, and so I was, I was, I can't say I was well known, but I, I, I'll, say, I'll tell you how well known I was. I ran for the student body president, and I was third in line of three <laughs> the election. I had her all the way through the university of my undergraduate studies, and uh, she was with me when I ran for the student senate and when I ran for the student uh, body president and, and, uh, and other things, things that I did. Wherever I went, she went. Uh, except that at five o'clock at night, she decided to go home because that was feeding time. And wherever I was, she stopped and would turn and head, head towards home, and, and there wasn't much I could do about it. <laughs> I just had to go along with her. The first window to the right of the right, iron rail was fine, and it looked right out. When I was a freshman at the University of Arkansas, Eleanor Roosevelt came to campus. And I was living in Holcomb Hall, where all the freshman girls lived then. And she came and stayed there. At that time, she was the ambassador to the UN from the United States. And they told us that she was going to eat dinner with us one day. Then they told us that they would, had chosen certain people to sit at a table because Mrs. Roosevelt could see us. We would be in her line of sight and we had been chosen because we had good table manners, which I thought would please my mother and my grandmother so much that I was chosen for something because of my good table manners. Tradition, like society's cookie cutter, stamps out the names of James, Mary, John, and graduated cement. Education comes in sharing the journey. It's a tremendous tradition, and um, I hope it never changes, frankly. It, it represents um, generations of families who have felt the same tug to this place that, that uh, we did so many years ago. Uh, my story and my family really began right here. I had, we have three sons. Um, two of those sons went to the University of Arkansas and have three degrees between them. The other son, unfortunately, is not in our will. <laughs> Having my name on Senior Walk has been a significant thing in my life that I am proud of, that has meant a great deal to me, and I have ta always taken my children, grandchildren, friends to Senior Walk to see my name. I could take you there right now. <laughs> My name is David G. Davies. I'm on Senior Walk 1970 and 1972, and my family has something in the neighborhood of 30 plus uh, names on Senior Walk, uh, starting in 1894 and 1896 with Lila and Hadji Davies. One of those ended up being a uh, faculty member teaching English, and the other uh, was a uh, in the first pledge class for Chi Omega. My uh, aunts, husband, William Cravens, uh, Aunt Caroline's husband, is also a graduate of the university, but I think it cost two dollars. And so while he ended up being vice president of city service, I don't think he had two dollars in 1935. And you know, you bring grandchildren up and show it to them, and it, uh, I think, gives them psychological strength to know that if all these people made it, they can too. And uh, it's something, uh, where else can you go and show the grandchildren the names on a senior walk? There are no other senior walks. And I would bring my roller skates, which were the kind that had the little key, and I would get out there on senior walk, walk all the way up to the top to the, to the start of Old Main, 
and strap them on and skate all the way down with my pigtails flying to the bottom of the hill, take them off, walk back up again, and I would do that over and over again. And sometimes I would stop along the way and look at all the names on Senior Walk. And, you know, at the age of six and seven, I told Mom and Dad, I said, I want my name on that walk, and I want to come here. In terms of history, the seasons pass swiftly. There is the long walk uphill under trees that provide an aisle of shade during spring and early fall. Trees that direct the piercing wind straight through the diligent student in winter. Damn, the wind. To its students, the university is primarily a place of learning, a place which offers expert instruction in fields and careers that are diverse and truly representative of our times. So you know me. I like to teach with analogies. You, you need one more analogy from me. We have several snow globes and lava lamps and purple unicorns. And Finals are a sort of judgment day. For some students, the final is the first class session they've attended. Professors must delight in seeing all the new faces. We have some incredible, incredible faculty here who I know could go anywhere. Uh, in a heartbeat. They choose to stay here for a variety of reasons, and I have to believe it's because of the way that we view education as being the highest priority of the campus. But in, the, in its essence, it's this institution is about people and helping them reach their dreams. I think that there's the, the reward is in and of itself that which provides you with some degree of in a feeling of satisfaction, knowing that you've helped someone in some way. And I have wanted to do that over the years with my students, uh, encouraging them, uh, helping them to figure out ways to uh, reach their dreams and their goals. I see my role as developing students to succeed in not just in the classroom, but in society. All that I do is to help them to be prepared to work in the real world and thrive. The students' uh, success was what was most important. And it wasn't about the professor uh, or perhaps even as much what I was teaching as it was making sure that the students succeeded. Uh, and to do that, one has to make classes interesting uh, as possible. And uh, I'll admit that making a accounting class interesting sometimes was a bit of a challenge. Uh, but by making the classes interested in making the students look forward to their careers uh, and seeing how they could be a professional, someone who, whose goal was to improve society and, and not perhaps to make as much money as they could, but rather to leave the world a better place uh, because of what they did. My goal is to you know, get them to deal with difficulty and an uncertainty and being okay with being vulnerable in the creative process. Uh, so it's less about you know, always getting the right answer, but more about forming the right questions. Uh, I think that's what I'm really focused on uh, with them. And I think, uh, I think immersion is a really good aspect of this to immerse them in the process, immerse them in the environment, uh, immerse them in the place uh, to kind of interrupt the habitual way they often see things, to challenge preconceptions. Okay, all right, that was a test. <laughs> If you don't get that right, then it's all, it's all screwed up. When students arrive at unexpected places, uh, there's a great reward there very often for them. What if it came and slipped up and over, right, in the way that he's kind of 
trying to bridge over, you could actually come up and cantily be part of that. There are those who believe that our role as a teacher is to simply fill the vessel. Um, one of the things that attracted me to Arkansas was during my interview, um, the faculty that I talked to made it very clear to me that they do not ascribe to that philosophy, that our job is to meet the students where they are, and students come from across this state with a variety of educational backgrounds, and our job actually is to get each of them to the stage for commencement. Individuals have different levels of ability, different motivations, and those who come here and stay are, are people who are determined to make it often, and, and they have circumstances that allow them to achieve their goals, and often they come to see this place as home. This is your university. This is your university. You have as much claim to it as anybody else. You try to work and make it all that it can be. So I was fortunate enough to have this small department where I could find a home. And even within that, the Traveler and the Razorback, where I just hung out all the time. I would be in Hill Hall all hours of the night working on stuff. It was about six o'clock in the evening and I was walking across campus. Uh, I just passed the Greek theater, was walking on the sidewalk headed toward Hill Hall, where I was gonna study. And a person passed me, a guy passed me. Um, and I didn't recognize him, but I didn't think anything of it. But as he passed me, he said, that building is on fire. And he pointed to Hill Hall. And I looked at it and saw smoke coming out of the building. And I immediately started running to the building. And by the time I got close to the building, there was a woman in front of the building. She said, Hill Hall is on fire. And I said, I know. And I ran in and I ran up two flights of stairs uh, to the traveler office where I was headed in the first place. And I could see fire coming from underneath the door. Ran across Maple Street, beat on the door of the Tridell house. And they opened the door and I said, I got to use your phone, Hill Hall's on fire. We got to call the fire department. And then I came over to Hill Hall to see what was going on. And of course, walking in from that side, um, we could see the, the flames had already begun to go into the, into the sky. The roof was well afire and a crowd was starting to gather all around the building. It was, um, it was, it was just a shocking sight to see it. There was a big difference between those of us who worked and studied in the building and those who came to watch the fire, ultimately calling the hogs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of like a bonfire. Uh, they, they viewed it like a bonfire, and we viewed it like our house burning down. Anytime that some large chunk of the, of the roof fell in, or some part of it fell off the side of the building, that seemed to spark the hog calls. One of the proudest moments of my years at the University of Arkansas was the first time I held that <laughs> copy of that November 12th, 1969 paper, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that that fire had just occurred a few hours ago and we had had that paper printed and distributed on campus. The day after that, we followed up again with the next news talking about the firefighter that got, got hurt, hurt, the policeman who got hit by a car, right. all while they were responding to that fire. One of my responsibilities was to be faculty advisor to KUAF, which at that time was a 10-watt student radio station known as the 10-watt wonder. And um, I'm, I'm at home listening to KUAF and enjoying the music and um, all of a sudden the DJ comes on and he says he sounds a little bit panicked and he says well there's smoke coming into the control room I don't know where it's coming from but we're gonna go down rocking 
Here's Leonard Skinner. Life around here is a zoo. The university is a jungle with thousands of unique creatures. Some of them have hairy faces and bare feet. Some don bow ties and platform shoes. Others wear uniforms. Though each of us is unique, we all share common problems. We have survived the transition from adolescence to young adulthood into a breeding ground for neurosis. Someone once said, God will not look over you for medals, degrees or diplomas, but for scars. I wonder if he's an alumnus. In quieter moments, I keep coming back to the feeling that our world is not going to hell in a handbasket. So, young and troubled friends of the mid-1970s, take heart, question what you will, improve what you can, but hold fast to that which is good, for much of it has come to you through 10,000 years of trial and error. Professor Ernie Dean. Dear Mom and Dad, well, I've been in the fraternity house almost two months now, and so far it's been about what you said to expect. P.S. School is okay, even though I have to drop calculus tomorrow because I think I'm flunking. By the way, can you all send some money up for a fraternity sweatshirt? Everybody else has one. What is the best part of college life? Being four hours away from my parents. They're close enough when I need them and far away when I don't been waiting to be here. Why? I'm ready to get away from these two. <laughs> that is not nice. You well, you know, sometimes just the truth hurts. <laughs> Austin, Texas. Careful, there's precious cargo in there. What's in here? All my clothes. It took five hours or so to get up here, so it wasn't like, well, I can just go home for the weekend. No, buddy, once you got here, you were here until Thanksgiving. <laughs> and you had to hitch carefully then to get a ride home because uh, we had a biology teacher who didn't care whether we were trying to get home for Thanksgiving. We had to stay for that 6 p.m. lab. <laughs> I barely got home in time for dinner there. I would say one of the most, um, I guess, important times or experiences that I had was staying in the dorm. Um, I was, I'm the only, you know, girl in my family. Um, I had two brothers and I always had my own room. So when staying in the dorm, because my mother was adamant about me staying in the dorm and not being off campus, uh, I was able to cultivate a lot of friendships that I still have today uh, living in the dorm. And then also being actively engaged in inspirational singers was also a wonderful experience for me. I still have friends uh, that I can still connect with today because of my involvement with inspirational singers. in my more than 30 years here, uh, you remember moments, you remember great victories, but you also remember times where this campus had to bond together and come together. And there's no better place to be uh, when you're hurting than in a university community. I, I think of 9-11 and, and being on campus when we all didn't know what was going on, but the university came together. And I, and I think in those times, you see the university and, and support that maybe you didn't quite notice was there before. My name is Janice Faye Kearney. I graduated from the University of Arkansas in 1977. In September 1971, I was 17 and as green as green could possibly be 
What's more, I was leaving everything I'd known and loved all my life, my family, my community, my church, and my friends. I was leaving Gould for a place way up in the northwest corner of the state, a place called Fayetteville. Dad drove me to the Greyhound bus station in Pine Bluff. It was my first bus ride and it took me most of the day to arrive at my destination. I finally arrived in Fayetteville late afternoon. What surprised me most was this. After the excitement of this new life experience settled, homesickness set in. Thankfully, this was a phase that ended by early winter. Finally, I was making new friends and taking part in normal college activities like weekend student parties and intramural volleyball. My almost six years at the University of Arkansas were indeed transformational and overall wonderful and exciting. As I travel the country and even outside the country now, I get the opportunity to share my life with young people. I tell them how important those formative years between high school and real life are, where you spend them, how you spend them, and who you spend them with will impact the rest of your life. Certainly, we should treasure each moment, I tell young people, the good and the not so good. Be intentional about sifting as much of the good from those experiences as possible. Choices make us who we are, I say, and they become ever more important during the college years, when no one is looking over our shoulder or dictating what is right or wrong. I want to believe that the university in this 21st century will prove to be a true beacon of light, hope, and positive change for the state and region. I want to believe it will be the learning tree for thousands of young black and brown students, as it was for me, a beacon for the state in education, as well as social and cultural progress. I'm originally from Gould, Arkansas, located in the Delta, Southeast Arkansas, and the University of Arkansas was always a dream for me. I came to know about the University of Arkansas through Nolan Richardson, watching 40 Minutes of Hell, and I'd never seen someone bring a state together, bring people together, bring the country together, and to watch him win a national championship was phenomenal. I consider the University of Arkansas honestly to be a place and opportunity. I am here because I want to study triple negative breast cancer. I grew up with my grandmother and she talked a lot about her sister that died of breast cancer. And so my dream was to have a research lab where I could study the disease and possibly find a cure. So that's the one reason I'm here. The second reason I'm here is because I want to help people like me. That my story won't be a unique story, that there will be more people like me from my neck of the woods, from Southeast Arkansas, that will attend the University of Arkansas to pursue an undergraduate degree or graduate degree and that they will have the opportunities like I've had to reinvest in the community and to elevate it. The, the prestige and the honor of having your name on our campus just was so big to me that it was nerve wracking to go find my name. So it was actually 10 years after I graduated that I walked back on campus and I went for a walk on campus was what was happening. I just went out and I'm like, I, today is the day. I am going to go find my name. And I found my name and like everybody does nowadays, I took a picture, posted it on social media, and I almost cried. I was so relieved my name is on Senior Walk. Freshman year, we carried all our books to every class and didn't skip a page of reading. Sophomore year, we partied way too hard and laid in the Greek theater in lieu of sitting in class. Junior year, we prepped for the LSAT and the GRE and couldn't wait to graduate. Senior year, 
we got a little restless. As you walk through campus, you begin to look at the world around you, the one you've rented for four years. Who did you get to know? Blacks? Whites? Professors? How'd you spend your spare time? Drink beer at the Deluxe? When you gather up your memories, you'll realize that you learned a few things not exclusively academic. You made some friends and you had some really good times. This is home. This is home. I, my mother went to school here, um, but yet I am the first to graduate. So it's home. It's always been home. Um, my daughter is going to be a senior next year and plans to attend U of A. So this is definitely something that runs in our blood. Two of my granddaughters have graduated from University of Arkansas. Uh, my granddaughter uh, graduated in December, so I almost graduated with my granddaughter. Dixon Street, a distinctive strip offering diverse food, spirits, and entertainment. B, an avenue frequented by students, profs, minors, strays, field hippies, and their dogs. Fayetteville alone was a city that was, I, I enjoyed it because it was a college city, and so it wasn't really too wild, but it also wasn't boring. Right. Well, one thing that I thought was really cool is that uh, the bishop at the time, you know. So, Mokisha has assisted me this morning and she has laid the hearts on top of your tray with me. So the university closed it in the 90s and they were going to tear it down. Um, the students obviously did not like that, uh, so over $4 million was raised in order to restore the building. The structural integrity of it has been updated, uh, but a lot of its historical components are kept the same. These green doors here on the front with the brass hardware are original to the building, as well as the light fixture above, and a lot of the flooring, uh, doors, handrails and stairs are also original inside. We got some fence cutters, bolt cutters. These are solid gold. We take them back to Fort Knox after uh, this event is over. But uh, this is how you renovate a building. I thought the lawn of Old Main was my household playground. It's where I played. My father would bring my brother and I, and I think it probably leads to where I became a scientist, take me up to the fourth floor museum and walk around the museum and see the anthropological exhibits and the ge geological exhibits. And to me, Old Main was the Smithsonian of Arkansas. This is where all of the knowledge of the world resided, was up here on our hill. We came to the University of Arkansas defined by the identities of our families and shaped by our childhood dreams. We look forward to what our futures might bring. We called the hogs at every sporting event. We pulled all-nighters in our favorite study spots. We made new friends who became family. Through it all, we became Razorbacks. And I can remember the first pep rally in the Greek theater 
Uh, it used to be run by Arkansas's Booster, Arkansas Booster Club, ABC. And it was full of bad puns and a lot of tasteless stuff that just made me crack up because I was a true freshman, 17 years old, and ready to be just, just, just knocked to my knees with stupid stuff. And I found enough of that to believe, well, this is home. This is gonna be all right. I, I can find a place for myself. It's like the call of the wild when the Razorback band begins to play. Hundreds of loyal fans scream at the top of their lungs and dance wildly at the sound of a bass drum. Pep rallies provide the perfect stress release. They allow students to demonstrate just how much being a Razorback means. I started my first football game and I was in the rafters. I was in the green part of the upper bleachers. I didn't know anybody. I was crying because I realized I had no friends and <laughs> I needed to, I had just left and I was like, I have to do better. I have to really apply myself. And the way that the university ended for me was I was actually on the sidelines interning for athletics and I was in the background of the Joe Adams play, uh, the punt return against Tennessee. So Arkansas is a great place for you know, entertainment, athletics, and it ties in very much with business and with administration. And so for me, that was the full circle moment that, that I had at the University of Arkansas. I was an outsider, uh, somebody who is totally from a different part of the world. But when I came here, the most important thing that happened with me and the, the UFA uh, community did was made me feel home. And now that I'm graduating, I was so eager to graduate uh, since I came here, but now that I am, I'm really sad to leave this place. I just, I'm here even on the weekends, even during the summer, I just can't get enough of this place. I've seen students come from all walks of life and walk through the doors uh, and walk across our campus and, um, and graduate successfully. Students who didn't think that they had a chance to go to college, students who didn't think that they could graduate, students who may be first generation college students getting bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and, and, and PhDs. And so it's been amazing to see these students who came here um, as individuals, as frightened individuals, leave here uh, with something much bigger. My story begins in 1997. I was nine years old. My family and I are from the central part of Mexico, and we walked the Sonoran Desert for about eight hours. As a nine-year-old child, all I remember is my feet sinking into the sand, being afraid of the pitch black darkness, hearing rattle, what, what I thought were rattlesnakes, and just holding as tightly as I could to my mom and walking just with faith in her and where we were going. And so lo and behold, uh, we came to Northwest Arkansas because my mom had family here. I'm a first generation college student, so my first day, like many other students, I was lost. I did not know my way around campus. It felt overwhelming, but it was also exhilarating as an opportunity to be in a place where the next four years of your future could define opportunities. ¿Qué tal y muy buenas noches? Comenzamos la, nuestra sección de noticias de entretenimiento con nominaciones. The best experience I've had was joining forces with other students to start a Spanish television show, uh, Noticias UATV. And we collaborated with students from different um, departments, from business to psychology, working the cameras to the journalism students being on front. And we became a production crew, and it was fascinating to see us come together and at the end look back at the show and, and feel so proud and accomplished to leave uh, a legacy or a footprint, if you will, of what our impact could be. So having my name engraved, um, I cannot wait to bring my little one um, and show him one day um, and sit down and next to my name and just talk to him about the stories of how the university 
um, help create the person that I am today. I could do it, and it'd be cool. But I was always... You know, our students here truly want to learn. They are really interested, and they are raw, and they are learning the fundamentals. And I love the way in which they evolve. I love uh, dealing with them at, at you know uh, the most basics of drawing and thinking, uh, and and thinking and pursuing uh, truth and true things, you know, in their discipline, uh, and understanding the history of that discipline in a way, and its possibilities for the future. Uh, when they come out on the other end, they're not the same person. Its impact is local, but it's also. One evidence of the importance of the University of Arkansas to the nation was the appearance of Vice President Hubert H. Humphrey at the 1968 commencement exercises. Graduation is receiving lifelong respect and recognition that comes from earning a vast amount of knowledge. Knowledge is the reward. On May 9, hundreds of university students milled about in confusion in the tunnels of Bud Walton Arena as they tried to find their place in line. The buzz of conversation intensified with questions. Which side does the tassel go on? And where are the ages? filled the air. On behalf of the world feeding, faculty experts in plant and animal breeding, highest ROI faculty, design-centered and publicly engaged faculty, where we train famous poets, politicians, neurosurgeons, and even rock stars. To present to you the candidates recommended by the extremely dedicated and wicked smart graduate faculty to receive those degrees. Maybe the best thing about being a faculty member at the U of A and in Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences, when one of your children walks across the stage as a faculty member, you get to go up and hand them their diploma. That was unbelievable. I don't remember any sounds, any noise. You know, I just remember them coming across the stage with a big smile on their face, looking right at me and me, giving them a hug and their diploma. That's a cool memory. Strolling down Senior Walk, calling the hogs to victory, studying on Old Main Lawn in the warm sun. The traditions that identify who we are were established long before we set foot on this campus, and they will remain long after we graduate and leave this phase of our lives behind. By accepting them as our own, we help to ensure the legacies left by those who came before us will live on for generations beyond our time. I think Senior Walk is so special because it's like a part of you never really leaves the university. Even if it's just your name, there's still kind of your mark that's left on campus. You always have a place to return to. And when you see your name on campus, it can really bring back all the memories of you walking on campus and the random girl you met and the professor that made your experience really special and all the highs and the lows that have come with being a student because that's gonna make them mad. To you students who are young and full of hope and vision, we give the problems, and they are many. May you do better than we have done. And when you must pass on your work, as we are now doing, may it be said to the youth of 2036, the next hundred years will be the easiest. Giles E. Ripley, Dean of Men, 1923, to 1936. A quest for higher education and the hurdles that path requires is what united the first 10 students and eight faculty in 1872, and it's what unites students and faculty today. We all share a common desire to learn more, to have more, to be more. This is the University of Arkansas, and we're making a difference here. This is a university, when I look across other universities, we still live every single day 
the land grant mission we do every day what this university was created to do. To be a great university and do us being on the maps, we've got to do more. Now, so what I see is our opportunity in the next five to eight years, a dramatic growth in research. Everything from humanities to STEM, it's going to grow. Well, you know, Abraham Lincoln talked about our country creating a more perfect union. I think that we need to be, create a more perfect campus. And, and you know, the, the goal, we're always striving to live up to the high mission that we've established for ourselves, a high sense of purpose, high, the values. And we need to continue to do that with, not just with words, but with real energy, with real commitment, with uh, practices that ref and, and accomplishments that demonstrate that our efforts are not just empty and futile, but are fruitful and productive. My hope for the university in, in the future is for it to continue to grow in prominence and for it to truly be recognized for what it is, which is, to me, the best university in the world. The university has many moods, sometimes bustling, often serene, with the damp and chill of a campus morning and a heart that makes the outbound student feel he's really not going home, but leaving home. We are fundamentally about helping students who come to us with big dreams reach those dreams, realize those dreams. And as long as we never, ever deviate from our understanding that that is our singular importance, this institution will be around for another 150 years. So the University of Arkansas is my school, and I tell all the newcomers, Get yourself some razorback hats and go yell for the pigs and have fun and be all that you can be and make the school live up to its reputation and promise for doing something. So those are my charges. And so over and over is the drama of Senior Walk reenacted. Long after each year's happy seniors have packed away their diplomas and forgotten the oft-lamented hardships of college life, Senior Walk lives on to serve as a lasting memento to their once having been an important part of the university. Because on Senior Walk lies the heart of the university. I graduated at a time after we had already celebrated the first 100 years. And uh, getting the names on Senior Walk was really expensive the way they used to do it. And there was some thought, uh, some ponderance about whether or not the tradition would continue. Uh, and so there was a number of years that went by without anybody's name on the walk. And then I'd heard that somebody here on campus had invented something called the Sand Hog. To, blast those names more economically into the walk. So I was up here for some reason and I, I walked around campus and just, and finally found where my name was. And I, I, I walked over to where it looked like it was gonna be and there was a garbage can sitting on top of it. So I thought, how fitting. But I started working at the university, making videos and, and then there's this program for documentary film in the journalism department. And I said, well, I'm here. I get a discount for school, so might as well. So uh, a few years later, I graduated with a master's in journalism documentary film. And now I've created probably about five films since then and working on one at this very moment. It's always nice to come back to campus, to see the buildings, to walk in. Even if you've been gone for a year or two, open a door and you can go inside Kemple Hall and it 
you smell it and it still smells the same and you look around and all those memories come rushing back to you. It, it's, it's, it's really nice.